And the New York City Beverage Association had this to say. There they go again. Quote, the city is not going to address the obesity issue by attacking soda because soda is not driving the obesity rates, unquote. Jeff Steyer is joining us now from New York. He's the director of the National Center for Public Policy Research Division and nutritionist Mira Calton and co-author of the book Naked Calories joining us via Skype. Thank you both so much for being with us. Uh, Mira, let me start with you real quickly. Is that true what, what the uh, Restaurant Association just said or the Beverage Association that soda is not a factor in obesity rates? Look, first of all, I want to say that nobody thinks that sugar is a great food. It's not even a food. It's processed and it's an anti-nutrient. We're all aware of that. But the problem is that just limiting it to a smaller can of soda isn't going to solve anything because people are just going to buy two sodas or they're going to buy a soda and a chocolate bar. What we really need to do is educate people. Just not, just not, you know, it's education, not limitation that was really required here. Okay, let me ask you, Jeff. You say that this gives grasping at straws a whole new meaning. Can you elaborate on that for us? Well, obesity is a serious problem, and Mira is 100% right. We need science-based approaches to address it, and banning large sodas is, is silly. And, the, you know, the mayor, to his credit, wants to help us solve the problem. Banning it isn't the way to go. People say, well, might this do a little bit of good? Well, there are a lot of things that restrict our freedoms that might do a little bit of good, but at the end of the day, we'll still only have done a little bit of good and have no freedoms left. I was in front of your studio here at CNN in New York, and they were selling large ice cream cones. They looked really good. I chose not to have one. It's about individual choice. People should make these decisions. The government can't come in and solve this problem. You just made a great point, Jeff. And, and Mira, I want to ask you about this. Mira, you said it's about education. We know. I, I have posted this on my Facebook page. I've gotten so many responses. People saying, look, this is a choice. Uh, but at the end of the day, it seems like people give in to the willpower, no matter how much education they have. And I'm wondering, you know, from a, a psychological standpoint, why is it that we can't break this habit of eating or drinking too much? I mean, what, is there science behind that? Absolutely. And actually, we, this is fantastic. We talk about this in Naked Calories. It's actually, sugar is more addictive than cocaine. So you're not just going to give it up one day because, because you feel like it. It actually takes a lot more than that. And actually, micronutrients, the vitamins and minerals that your body needs, when your body's not getting them, your body craves things. And scientific report after scientific report explains this. If you're craving salty foods, you're probably to calcium. So really, it's about eating micronutrient-rich foods. Foods Eating the right foods will actually help you stop eating the wrong foods. Right. And Jeff, you say this, uh, this approach, the proposed ban from the mayor, is not the way to go. But what is the way to go, in your opinion, then? Well, we need science-based approaches. I think, you know, the mayor doesn't want to say it, and to his credit, he didn't ban diet soda, but encourage people to cut down on their calorie consumption, calorie consumption, not soda consumption, overall. Encourage people instead of scaring people. Hey, we'd rather you drink water, but have a diet soda instead of a full sugar soda. I mean, these are basic little incremental steps that people could take. Yeah, eat more vegetables and eat more micronutrients. I'm all for that. But let's take into account how people really are and help them and not take away choices. I think science can play a role that the, that the limitations that we place on people freedoms, people's freedoms should be based in science. And there's food technology that we can use ways of making high calorie foods healthier yes even if they're processed a little bit it's not so bad as long as we move people in the right direction limit their calories and don't tell them they can't have any fun the mayor you know this, i predict he's going to have to backtrack on this one this is this is blown up and it's uh, there's a lot of opposition to this new yorkers took well, i think one collective big gulp yesterday and said uh-uh we're not going to take this well and mira i mean this really it's about health but it's also about health care and health care costs is the underlying issue here isn't it Absolutely. I mean, we all want to see people get healthier. But the whole thing is it's starting so young now. We have to train the young kids as to why these foods are bad. So we have to explain to them there are better choices, healthier choices, like Jeff said out there. We want kids to understand that the fruit juice that's just as loaded with sugar isn't necessarily a great choice. Eat a piece of fruit. Tell them the levels of how to make things better. And, for some, reason, and for some reason, the mayor exempted fruit juices. It makes no sense. All right, Jeff Steyer and uh, Myra, uh, Mira Colton, thank you both so much. So good to get your, uh, your opinions today. We appreciate you taking the time. Thanks. Sure. Thanks for having us.